All right, guys, in this video, I have a 2011 Kia Sorento with a 3.3. The customer complaint is that the airbag light is on. Ooh. Show you guys that. And the airbag light stays on. Well, as you can see, the airbag light is on and it does stay on. So what we're gonna do now is scan the vehicle. Wrong button. And we don't need this. Yeah. And yes. And we're gonna go USA. We're gonna go yes. We're gonna go diagnose. We are gonna go straight for the airbag. And we're gonna pause. It's a nice little feature with the hotel being able to pause it. Now we're gonna go fault. We're gonna go airbag event one. And we have a B1346 driver airbag resistance too high. First stage. So when you're dealing with a driver airbag uh, resistance too high, it's important to realize that there is also a clock spring that is involved that it could actually go defective. So we're gonna be testing out the driver airbag, which is this guy. And then if nothing changes on that, we're gonna move over to the clock spring side and test on that side to see if we're able to fix this issue, uh, diagnose this issue. So, we are going to need a wiring diagram, and we are also going to have to remove all the trim and everything onto the vehicle in order to get the stuff. So, I'm going to pause you guys. I'm going to start taking stuff apart so we can uh, move a little more freely and have a nice little flow to this video. And actually, before I do that, we're going to escape. We're going to go to live data. We're going to go to current data. And we're going to look and see what our resistance is. So 2.73 driver airbag resistance one is fail. So we're going to take this one. And we're also going to take our number two. And now I'm going to take it and start removing stuff so we can go and test. All right, so now I have the, the, the DAB, your driver airbag system, undone, uh, removed from the vehicle. Well, semi-removed from the vehicle. Everything's still plugged in. Now, one side is going to be your first stage, the other side is going to be your second stage. Now, when you come down to the wiring diagram, as you can see, they don't, they don't show you which side is your first stage and which side is your second stage. So, the easiest way that I found was to come up here and just unplug if you see if there's a resistance change. So I just unplugged my black one and as you can tell the resistance went up. And now I'm going to remove it completely. And it went to fail. So the black one is uh, my driver airbag first stage. So what's the next part that we're going to do is if you guys have seen any of my other airbag videos, we are going to take a substituted load. Because all an airbag module is, is actually just a load. And it's just putting out a resistance. And the SRSCM is taking that resistance and validating it. That's all it's doing. So we're going to take and hook up the light. And we're going to see if there's a change. Now, if I don't see a change in my data over here, then we are going to have to move down and test at the clock spring, which is this guy. And we're going to have to come on to pins one and two. And we're going to have to go on to the black and red. And we're going to do the exact same test. We're going to unplug it. And we are going to take and plug up the light. Now, when I unplug this connector, my driver airbag second stage is going to set a code. But that's okay. We want to test and see if we are able to get our first stage to work afterwards. So, what I'm going to do is pause you guys. And I'm going to take and hook up the light. And then I'm going to take and put you guys onto the scanner. 
So because I can't actually get into the terminals because they are so small, give you guys a little view. Because the terminals are so small and I can't get in there, I took and I basically just undid the back piece of the connector in order to expose the, expose the wires. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and connect uh, my light bulb to the back of the wires and I'm going to set you guys up onto the scanner and we're going to see if we see a resistance change. All right, so I have you guys set up onto the scanner and now I'm going to connect the light bulb and we're going to see if there's a resistance change. So it is touching and as you can tell, well, it's still reading very, very high resistance, which is not supposed to. Just remember, my light bulb's added like a 3 ohm resistance, so I should be seeing roughly about 3 ohms onto that. And I'm not. So now what we're going to do is disconnect the, well, the clock spring connector, show you guys that. And the clock spring connector lives right here underneath the steering wheel. And if you remember it said blue and red, which would be this one and that one. The two for two on the left. And I'm gonna take my light bulb and I'm gonna connect it in there. Now as I told you, my right will go to fail also. Now I'm gonna take and connect my light bulb onto pins one and pin two. And as you can see, I got 2.95 ohms. So where's my issue? My issue is onto my clock spring. It's that easy to test an airbag system. If I do the same test, well actually, one on what, I'll show you guys that. So what I'm gonna do now is show you guys the driver side airbag, second stage. And I'm gonna do the exact same test that I just did onto my first stage. going to show you guys just going to connect everything back up okay now I'm going to take this guy and we're going to put him back in now I'm going to remove the second stage it should jump up to about 0.6 somewhere around there so as you can see I just removed the second stage shorting bar tab and now we're going to take and remove it. And it goes to fail. Now I'm going to do the exact same test that I did onto my first stage. Just to show you guys that, that you can use this test and it does work. So now I have it open just like I did on my first stage. And as you can see it says fail. Now I'm just going to take and touch my light bulb onto the wires. And you guys should see an instant change. And as you can see, I got 3.35 ohms. So, with that being said, my issue is on to my clock spring. And the clock spring is going to have to be replaced. And after it is replaced, this car should be perfect. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this little diagnostic video on the airbag systems. And if you guys have any questions, please leave them and subscribe and comment. And I will see you guys next time.